So let us take a look at the properties of integers, more specifically for the operations of addition and subtraction. And we are going to look at three properties, the closure, commutative and associative. Remember, we discussed all three of them while we were talking about the whole numbers. But in this case, we are going to focus our attention on integers, right? So closure first. Closure law states that if you take two integers and if you add them together, it results into a number that is also an integer. Okay. And likewise, the same two integers or any two integers in general, if you subtract one from the another, it will also result into a number that is an integer. Okay. So let's take a look at by giving some examples to it. So my first number is, let's say I take negative, negative two, and I'm adding negative three to it. It results in negative five. Take another set, let's say four plus 10. It results into 14. So if I were to take some subtraction examples, let's say I take five minus 10. So you are subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number and it results into negative five. Likewise, if I take one more pair, let's say negative four less negative two. So you are subtracting a negative number from another negative number, right? And it will be read as negative four plus two because these two negatives will cancel each other, right? And this will result into negative two. So you notice that whether you take two positive numbers or whether you take two negative numbers, whether you perform the operation of addition or subtraction, it always results into a number that belongs to the space of integers. And that is exactly what closure is telling us that under the operation of addition and subtraction, closure law for integer always applies for both of these operations. Okay. So this is the closure property of integers. So now let us take a look at the commodity property of integers. So we are stating that when you take two numbers, let's say integers and you add them together, the commutative law stating that keeping this sign of operation, the addition fixed. And if you were to switch the position of these numbers around, right? Meaning numbers can move around this addition operation. This result is always going to be the same as stating that a plus b is going to be equal to b plus a, meaning these numbers can commute around, right? So let us prove this by taking some examples. I have two numbers, four and two being added, it results in six. Instead, if I were to take two first, add four to it, it will still be six. There is no difference between these two statements, right? So nonetheless, these two results are equal, correct? Now let us take two negative numbers. I have negative two added with negative five. What will be the result? It will be read as negative two, negative five, which will be negative seven. So instead, if I were to move these two numbers around, I will say that negative five first added with negative two it will be still read as negative five, negative two, correct? And these two statements are identical. Hence, it will result in a same number. Or in other words, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side all the time. Only when you have this operation sign as addition between two numbers, okay? But the same property will not hold true when we change the sign of this operation. Instead of positive, if I make this sign as negative. Okay. So this is the difference. Now it will not be the same. So let's take a look at by taking some examples. So let us put some numbers to it. In the case of subtraction between two numbers, I have 10 and then there is negative and then we have five. It will be five. Simple enough, right? But if I were to move these numbers around, I will say that five written first, subtracted 10 from it, now this will result in negative five and these two results are not the same, right? And this whole thing is happening because of this negative sign in between two numbers. So when we put a negative sign between two numbers, the sequence of how these numbers are written, it really does matter. The order matters when it comes to the sign of negative between two numbers. So we can state that under the commutative principle, when we add two numbers, the commutative law holds true. Okay. But when we subtract two numbers, the commutative principle does not work. Okay. And that is what commutative law means for integers. So now you will discuss about the associative law and you will find that it is very closely linked with the commutative principle. Okay. So let's go take a look at that. 
So in case of associative law, we are stating that when you take three integers, let's say a, b and c, and let me rewrite here as well, a, b and c. The principle states that it does not matter how you add numbers together as long as they are being added. Meaning whether you add a and b first and add to c versus adding b and c first and then adding the result to a. In both cases, the result is always going to be the same. Okay. So let's prove that with the help of some numbers. I'm going to take, let's say some negative numbers here. Negative two, I have negative four and negative three. All right. And these are the numbers, individual numbers with the negative sign in front of them. And we are adding these numbers in this sort of grouping. Okay. So in this case, you can rewrite the left hand side, which is this side that it will be rewritten as negative two added with negative four and it will be negative six, correct? And then you say that negative three is being added to negative six, it will be negative three here because this positive and negative will make a negative, correct? And in nutshell, this will be negative nine. So now let us apply these same numbers to the right hand side. So first I'm writing the B and C, which will be negative four, right? And then there is a negative three and then we have a addition sign between them. And this is my group one. This whole grouping will be added with a number which will be negative two. That is my number A, right? And then there is a positive sign in between. So first we will solve this group. You see there is a negative four added with negative three. The result will be what? It will be negative seven, correct? Added with negative two, right? And this becomes negative two added with negative seven, which will be negative nine. So clearly you see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, correct? And that is what associative law is stating in case of addition that it does not matter how you pick your groups under addition. The result is always going to be the same. Okay. But the same law doesn't hold true for the subtraction operation. So let us take a look at the associative law under subtraction. So we have three integers. And this is how I'm going to form their group that B and C will be operated first and whatever is the result will be subtracted from number A and this is the left hand side. On the right hand side though, I take the group A and B first and whatever is the result, we will subtract number C from that result. Okay. So let's assign some numbers to it. I have four and then we have six and three. Okay. And these are my groups. And of course, three will be subtracted from six. It will give you three. And then there is a four here and four minus three is equal to one. Okay. On the right hand side though, using the same numbers, I have four minus six. This is my group one subtracted is three from here. So four minus six is negative two. And then we have negative here and three, which will be negative five. So clearly the left hand is not equal to the right hand side. And that is exactly what we were stating that the associative law, it holds true for addition, but it does not hold true for subtraction. Meaning the order of numbers, how they are placed under subtraction, going from left to right, the order does matter in case of subtraction. But the order is not a problem when we are talking about addition only. So in summary, the snapshot of our discussion is today that under the operation of addition and subtraction, the law closure holds true for integers for both of these operations. But when we talk about the commutative and associative property, they both hold true for addition, but none of them does apply on the subtraction operation, right? With that, you can see that there is some linkage between the commutative property and associative law, right? And that is exactly what is the key point of our entire discussion today that how you will understand these three properties with reference to the operation of addition and subtraction for the number that the set of numbers is integers. Okay. Now let us go take a look at our next tutorial, which is more about discussing these three properties, but under the operations of multiplication and the division. So let us proceed towards that.